Coming up on Techzilla, want to watch movies on your computer? We'll tell you the best places to rent them online. Plus, don't let gaming gadget knockoffs fool you. And think mixtapes are dead? Well, think again. All in this week's episode, which is brought to you by Drobo, DNS Stuff, GoDaddy.com, and the giraffe in your kitchen eating your cookies. Hello and welcome to Techzilla. I'm Jessica Corbin. And I'm Patrick Norton. And it, it's good to be here. This is very good to be it's here. It's very good to be here. There's something brand new to the set, people. Can you figure it out? Can you figure it out? It's Barb. Barb the plant. We brought her on for a little cameo appearance. Hope you enjoy her. She's big on OS 10 tips. She'll be doing one later <laughs> on in the show. Anyway, Pat, how are you? It's, it's a little strange. You're a little strange, I know. Lack of sleep, <laughs> baby was sick, and I ended up sitting in a car in the middle of Pier 39. Is that strange for you? Well, one, Pier 39 like is a little strange. Sounds like pretty much par for the course. No, no, no. It was, like, it was like tourists everywhere, a lot of foreign languages, yeah. a lot of, do you know where I can find the tower? Yeah. <laughs> like, you mean the a one, pizza. the... Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so, anyhow, it's like a local mall tourist attraction. Yeah. Uh, sitting in a Ford car, uh -huh. sitting in a uh, Focus, actually. Yeah. Because I was getting a demo of the new sync system. Yeah. It actually worked. It did. That was the weirdest part. Well, can you fill our viewers in on what sync is? Well, okay, so Ford Sync, right, is a voice control, uh, well, let me, let me use their phrase, it, an in-car voice activated, fully integrated entertainment and communication system, which yeah. is a horrible name for basically, it's voice control of your stereo, works with like an iPod or a Zune, uh, Bluetooth, Bluetooth communications, including dialing your cell phone and text messages, and it's built by Microsoft. Yeah. And yes, the first thing I checked is to make sure you can update the software by like inserting a USB. So it's all integrated into the dashboard. Nice. And the really interesting thing is they use a blend of controls on the steering wheel, right, along with the actual voice controls. Uh -huh. So to do a voice command, you hit a button on the on the steering wheel, and it's like goes into voice mode, and then uh -huh. it recognizes your voice, so you give it a command. So I mean, I was actually shocked. It's not the best computer-generated voice. It sounded uh -huh. a little computer. -y. It wasn't like some French woman, like talking to you. <laughs> Next, I will play for you this sublime <laughs> song that will make you weep, my friend. It no, like that. It's it, very it, it was. Monotone. It wasn't like you know. It wasn't like listening to Apple talk or uh -huh. something back in the day. But it, it had a little computery chunkiness to it. Um, but the speech recognition was a lot better than I expected. They said it wouldn't take any training. I couldn't believe it. And you know what? Look what happened when I tried to pull up a song. If you know an album, say play album and give it the album name. Okay. Got it. USB. Please say a command. Play album, rattle and hum. Playing album, rattle and hum. Bitchin'. It worked. Uh -huh. I was shocked. Uh -huh. You know, we had a couple points where we glitched it because we were doing a lot of, I was asked them to do a lot of strange stuff with it, but it actually looks pretty simple to use. And uh, it's not too bad. They're not, it's not just a high-end thing. They're going to be offering it on everything from the low-end cars to the Lincoln. Specific Ford. Well, it's going to be, yeah, specific Ford. Uh -huh. uh, it's going to be standard, I believe, on Lincolns and like, four, excuse me, $495 in Canadian. Uh -huh. Why I remember that, I don't know. $395 as an option in the U.S. I am shocked that it works because <laughs> voice recognition, anything, just right. it's, everybody has, has thought that this really should, this technology really should be, you know, kind of buttoned up by right. now. And it still falls flat in a lot of regards. So well, I'm was, glad to hear it. You know, it's like the quick brown fox jumped over the lazy brown dog and you always see it type out as like M4, um, but, uh, you know what I mean? It's just if you if you had a Ford, would you buy it? Would if you I was going to buy a Ford, I would definitely consider buying it, which Good. is shocking for me to say. It yeah. actually worked because the voice styling worked, um, pulling up songs or searching songs, picking up an artist. It had the ability to recognize something like Sardé mm -hmm. or Sardé, depending on how you're saying Chardet. it. That way. Chardet. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I mean, like you think about it, usually like, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, you know, Houston is the street in New York, but it always says Houston. So uh -huh. it's, it's, it's voice recognition. It's not simple, right? Uh -huh. But it was actually working. So nice. definitely. If you're buying a Ford, definitely consider it. And yes, it works with an iPod, works with a Zune, works Love with that. a whole long list of Bluetooth phones. Great. And it does some speech to text stuff, so it'll read your text messages. No, check it out. Nice. Okay. Alrighty, so we got a question from a viewer. Okay. Which reads, where is the best place online to rent movies and watch them on your computer? I prefer not to buy any hardware or pay a monthly fee from Joe. Okay. Well, most of the monthly fee, fee places, it's a great idea, but usually they kind of suck. A lot of the places that rent movies online, they have monthly fees. It's like Attack of the Killer Weasels. And yeah. it's not like the good 50s Attack of the Killer Weasels. It's like something somebody made last week and it sucks. <laughs> or they have a lot of like second grade, like, I'm even going to go there. Just yeah, a, a lot of stuff. Yeah, a lot of bad yeah. stuff. 
Um, so we're going to assume you want Hollywood features and you don't want to go to the peer-to-peer -peer route boosting them. Right. Um, you know, in the United States, if you download a video offline that is copy protected and copyrighted, it's illegal. You don't like that, get off my ass, write your congressman. Now, and we also want to assume that you have a really fast internet connection because movie files are generally really, really, really big, big. Really big. And we, we're hoping you're on Windows because the only Apple option is going to be iTunes, which is another separate segment that we will get into later. Because you're bitter about <laughs> because iTunes Because I, I just wish you could rent. I just wish you could rent and not buy, but anyway, go on. Anyway, so assuming you're on Windows, we're going to skip options like the ability to burn a DVD or transfer to a portable player because you mentioned specifically playing them on a PC. And a home theater PC has a lot of potential. Cinema Now, Movie Link, been around for years. Mm -hmm. Amazon's Unbox is a relative newcomer, but I think it has a lot of potential. Yeah, and the services are very similar. All of them use Microsoft's DRM system Windows Media Player. Typical 16 by 9 content has a resolution of 720 by 408. Regular 4 by 3 content is uh, 640 by 480. So first yeah. run movies are usually about 399. 399 or about 15 to 20 to buy. Just like buying a DVD. <laughs> yeah, and you have about 24 hours to watch once you play, uh, once you hit play. Yeah, that's where you gotta be careful. Because once you, once you rent it, mm -hmm. you gotta watch it or else you gotta pay again. That's what we ran into like with the Voodoo machine. Yeah. Because if you like start watching something and you forget about it and you come back to it, you're gonna be renting a second time. So that yeah. $4 rental, instead of like going to the DVD kiosk at the supermarket where it's like $2, your $4 rental, or you know what I mean, if you don't if you don't return stuff on time, if you don't watch it within 24 hours, you're gonna be paying for it again. So you're it paying can, for the convenience is, is what you're doing. Yeah, if it's four in the morning and you're like, I really wanna watch a movie and the, the movie store is obviously closed. Close. This is a great way to good do option, it. And yeah. you're not going to be waiting like three days like you are with certain downloading schemes. Yeah. So there's a lot not to love here, but if it's a long drive to the video store, mm -hmm. um, I'd suggest you check out Cinema Now and Unbox. They're the two I've used the most. Um, Cinema Now, thousands of movies, lots of first run stuff. Skip the subscription stuff. It's kind of weak. It's mm -hmm. all like, you know, f you know, there's a weird mixture of like you can watch the free stuff without commercials. There, It's just a lot of second rate stuff. Um, decent download speed. Uh, the movies we checked out are actually like 1,500 kilobits per second. A DVD is like 3,500 to 6,000 kilobits per second. So you may notice compression artifacts if you go to full screen, especially on an HD TV. And it's not so much compression artifacts, it just gets a little fuzzier. Mm -hmm. and the clarity is not quite so crisp. Mm -hmm. um, very similar uh, to uh, uh, Unbox. Mm -hmm. uh, Cinema Now actually has, they have a download manager now. Mm -hmm. Unbox, which is Amazon's offering, has a download manager. Um, Unbox, I believe, has a little bit higher quality uh, bit rate on the video, but in either case, either one of these can easily be like uh, close to a gigabyte for a, a TV show. If you go to like, you know, if you go to Amazon Unbox and do like 2,500 kilobits per second, it can easily be a gigabyte for a show. A typical mm -hmm. download for either one of these services is more like 700 gigabytes. 700 gigabytes, yeah, 700 still gigabytes. Still a lot of space, still a no, lot of space. No, 700 megabytes, sorry. <laughs> 700 <laughs> so gigabytes. Yeah, that's a lot of space. You know, they let you download movies that are bigger than almost every hard drive available on the market. <laughs> no, they're like 700 megabytes, my bad. Um, one of the weird things about Amazon Unbox is it'll uh -huh. actually allow you to download movies to your TiVo. Uh -huh. If you're sort of a TiVo kind of guy or gal. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, I've actually uh, used both Cinema Now and Unbox. It's still, I'm still not doing it unless right. I'm in a pinch. Right. I'll still probably do Netflix because that subscription if service If the video works, store is closed, if it's a long drive. And you got a bad case of insomnia. These are great. <laughs> You know, Voodoo's the same way, yep. you know what I mean? It's, it's a nifty little service. The Voodoo's got a, a much easier to use interface, but it also means you can just be like downloading movies and racking up a huge credit card. Bill. One more option that will filter itself out as time goes. All right, so coming up, it's time to back up your Windows system. We'll show you how, but first. Looking for a random collection of videos to amuse you? Does clicking through YouTube take too much time? Check out channels, spelled with a three and a Z, dot com. The site which delivers an endless parade of videos from YouTube could be a serious time killer. So be careful, and props to Kiernan, one of your fellow Techzilla viewers, for putting the site together. And yes, he named it after the B-52 song, Channel Z. Hey, we want to welcome a new sponsor to Techzilla, Data Robotics. They make Drobo. Remember the, the, the hardware appliance? Of course. Yeah, they call it a uh, storage robot? Yeah. Okay, so they want you to know that Drobo, they say, is the easiest way to protect your data, and it expands forever. It's award-winning, has the highest rating uh, for storage ever at CNET.com. And if you're thinking about buying one, enter the code Techzilla, and you'll save $50 off the price of a Drobo. Cool? Very cool. They're also actually sponsoring something. 
Yes, because the following backup segment is brought to you by Data Robotics and Drobo. So we got an email and it said, mm -hmm. could you suggest some good backup software for Windows from Joe? A lot of Joes out there today. A lot of Joes. A lot of Joes. Hi, Joe. Joe Mollins, come on. You starting fights with the audience? I don't know what I'm doing. Keep going. Angry redhead starting <laughs> fights with the audience. Okay, we're going to focus on traditional file-based backup. Right? right. So I have these files, and I want to regularly back them up without kind of looking at the machine, right? right? So this is targeting data at the file level that's different from imaging software, which backs up the whole drive, you know, the boot sector, the operating system, and the data into a single file. Uh, one of my favorite EMCs, uh, it used to be Dance Retrospect. Mm -hmm. You can get a Retrospect HD really, really cheap. It's a very simple. Retrospect 7.5 Professional has has some, also some incredibly powerful and scriptable options. Another one we want to look at, and this one's actually free, and I'm going to see if I can get it to show up there because it's a little tiny icon, and this one's called Cobian Backup, version 8.0. If you're running Vista, this is a pretty interesting option. Um, and it's not too bad to configure, so I want to do a task, right? And I'm going to do a new task, and let's say I want to back up movies. So back up movies, and here I'm going to go in, I'm going to select the source of those files. And I'm going to go to a directory, and I can search around on my desktop. And you're basically getting the idea that you're going to follow through and select the files you want. So like I've got the Cinema Now movies I want to back up. And I can schedule when that's going to take place. I can choose how I'm going to archive it, compress it or not. And the interesting place is kind of where you either choose a full backup or like an inter like it's full or incremental backups. And incremental backup basically looks at the last time the set of files is backed up and only updates the files have changed. I like that. It takes you know, less time. It takes less time. That's the whole idea, right? Yeah. Or you can actually set things up so that you have multiple copies of the same files. Mm -hmm. If you want, like, the version that was on Tuesday, different from the version on Wednesday, from Thursday, from Friday. Mm -hmm. um, but these are two easy examples for you. Uh, Retrospect Express HD, about 40 bucks. Um, Kobe and Backup, eight free. Uh, all versions of Windows are covered. The uh, new version of Express HD, uh, EMC, not a Vista version yet, although it is running on Vista right now. Seems to be okay. So you might want to uh, be careful with that. 30 day free trials or free. That's Joe, good. check them out. Check them both out, Joe. All right, so coming up, game gadget knockoffs. They're out there and they're really scary. But first, here's Heather with her producer pick of the week. I love fairy tales and legends and fables like Rumpelstiltskin and Rapunzel. Beauty and the Beast, Prince Charming, and the Big Bad Wolf. But now I'm all grown up, and instead of reading Hans Christian Andersen, I read Fables, a Vertigo comic book series written and created by Bill Willingham. There are nine total graphic novels that tell the story of real life fairy tale and folklore characters who've been torn from their homes by the adversary. The hardly seen Geppetto, who you may recognize as the woodcarver from Pinocchio, and forced to live amongst humans in Fable Town, a community in bustling New York City. Shattering realities exist in this world, like Snow White and Prince Charming being divorced because of a scandalous affair Prince Charming had. Of all people, for more on Fables, be sure to check out the interview with the writer-creator Bill Willingham in episode 30 of iFanboy, right here on Revision 3. Have you figured out what it is that, that people really love about this book? Everyone knows the characters. So they've all got a starting point. DNS Report is a cool tool and the most powerful and comprehensive way to check the health of your DNS. 56 tests run against your domain in seconds. Get peace of mind at dnsstuff.com, a reliable go-to site that has everything you need. DNS is vulnerable though. Remember, no DNS, no internet. Type Techzilla into the coupon code when you buy a tool set and get 10 bucks off. How rad is that? There are a lot of knockoffs out there. Whether if it's faux handbags or cheesy watches off the street, they're out there. Now, one place that you don't expect to see knockoffs is technology. Usually what you see is what you get. Not in this case. Today, I'm gonna be taking a look at gaming peripherals that are totally subpar, and joining me is none other than the gaming guru, Jeff Gertzman. How's it going, man? It's going well. All right, you've had kind of a tough week. Uh, it's, it's been a little weird. I'm no longer with GameSpot.com or CNN Networks, um, but uh, it's been very exciting. And you're enjoying sleeping in and yeah, sleeping vegging in, out? Yeah, sleeping in, playing a lot of rock band because I want to, not because I have to. There is a difference. There, there totally is. Now, speaking of rock band, um, I picked up this little gem, which is for $9.98 at Walmart. That's a bargain. It's a bargain. <laughs> and, you know, you, you have the microphone, mm -hmm. you have, um, you know, the drums and, of course, the guitar. As an and a whammy bonus. bar, you can't and, go wrong. And a whammy right? bar, yeah. and a whammy bar. And as an added bonus, we have the keyboard. A key, so this is better than Rock Band. Right, and it has keyboard. Rock Band doesn't have a keyboard. No. This is great. 
No. no. But in all seriousness, people are probably going to be wanting to buy Rock Band or Guitar Hero 3. Yeah. Which one would you recommend? Uh, I think at this point, I'm, I'm going to say Rock Band. It's, uh, it's a much more inclusive game. I think it's something that kind of the whole family can get into. And it's, it's four-player excitement, you know? You have one person playing the drums, one person playing guitar, another on bass, one person singing. Uh, when it all, all those pieces fit together, it's really amazing. Guitar Hero 3 is a great game, though, uh, mm -hmm. but it's uh, become a lot more about just uh, you know crazy solos and really just this hand melting stuff that uh, that might not be as appealing to a lot of people. Unfortunately, they're not 9.98. What are the different cost points? Yeah, uh, the Rock Band bundle, where you get a drum kit, one guitar, a microphone of the game, is $170, and uh, then Guitar Hero is selling for around 99. Mm -hmm. uh, the Wii version is slightly cheaper. And now moving on, um, probably one of the the most identical to the original is uh, this little pretend remote. Yeah, this is just a, a blatant ripoff <laughs> of uh, Nintendo's Wii remote design. It's crazy. It's yeah. completely crazy. And, and so this is like a, a driving game uh, that you can play, and it's got a little screen right there on it, and you tilt it. And How big do you think that screen is? Like seriously? Like, <sighs> I don't God. Even know. It's like it's teeny tiny. Smaller than a postage stamp. Right, <laughs> and it's like, made by Tilt. Uh, I mean, it's called the Tilt. Mm -hmm. It's made by Toy Quest. Um, and it's not exactly the coolest thing. Yeah, I think uh, you know a clear sign is anytime you hear something rattling around inside uh, yeah. your device. We, we got that. A going. clear sign of uh, quality workmanship. Okay, but something that is really cool mm -hmm. is the zapper. Yes, the Wii zapper. Uh, yes. This is a their light gun peripheral that Nintendo has put out for the Wii. And what you do with it here is you actually just snap the Wii remote into it and the Wii nunchuck onto the back and hook them up. So there's no like electronics in this. This is just a shell. Uh, but then you can play light gun games, and it comes with a game called Link's Crossbow Training, where you're you know, just kind of target shooting and stuff like that. It's pretty neat. We have like this little VG Pocket, mm -hmm. which, um, you know, mobile gaming, very hot right now. Yeah. Uh, but this comes with Space Invaders. Perfect. What more do you need? Okay. Done. Well, well, you also have Burger Time. Whoa. I know. Well, all right, then. And this, it's this 30 is, bucks. This is the greatest game system ever made. Actually, I think it's not. Yeah, I think you're probably have right. Have you heard of the PSP? I, I have heard of the PSP. Right, and, and the, then there's the, the DS Lite. Yeah. So what's happening with those guys? Uh, well, the PSP is uh, pretty interesting these days. Sony just launched a new digital distribution platform for the PSP where they have a, a new siphon filter game that's uh, exclusively available as a download. Uh, so you can see maybe in the future as they build this out, it could almost be like a iTunes for games sort of thing. Uh, so that's really interesting. Uh, the DS Lite, uh, Nintendo brings it. You know, they have their classic franchises. This year was a great year for the DS with games like The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. Right. Uh, Mario Party DS is great if you're into the whole mini game thing. And uh, you can expect Nintendo to continue to deliver on their classic franchises in the future. If I just wanted one, which one would you suggest? At this point, I'm probably going to say the DS. It's, uh, there's just a ton of great portable games out there for them. Plus, it comes in fun colors like pink. Yeah, pink. Mine's red. but Yours is yeah. pink. Yeah, mine's pink. <laughs> okay. Um, and now, last but not least, we have the joystick. Yes. Um, now, I'm a big Spidey fan, as many of you may know. I just bought a Mary Jane Barbie doll. Outstanding. Still on the packaging. Good, good. You gotta keep it mint. Yeah. It's key. I mean, it's I, key. Want, I want to play with her hair, but I'm just not going mm. to. Anyway, so that attracted me to this. Mm -hmm. You just plug it into your uh, TV and you can play a few games. Cool. But. Uh, <laughs> But I, I'm, I'm guessing there are probably better joysticks out there. Uh, yeah, definitely. Uh, joysticks are really a PC-centric thing these days, and they're really only good for games like flight simulators. Uh, SciTech has a good, strong line of joysticks that if you're into that sort of stuff are perfect for the task. Uh, but gaming on the PC is really more about the mouse and keyboard, and increasingly about game pads. You can actually just plug in an Xbox 360 controller, and a lot of today's modern games like Crisis and, and whatnot will just recognize it and you'll be able to play it just like it was a console game. Uh, so that's been pretty interesting. Sure. Now, what about on the console side? On the console side, uh, Sony has a new controller that they'll be bringing out in the U.S. in the spring. It's out now in Japan. And this is the DualShock 3. Uh, this is actually pretty much exactly the same <laughs> controller, but it's just a little bit heavier because it has force feedback, so it'll rumble, which the original PS3 controller did not. Uh, so it's a little bit better. But, okay, uh, and I, I, yeah. I see they've kept the same design, but I guess if it's... Yeah, yeah, when you're improving on one of the greatest video game controllers ever made, you know, there's only so much you can do. Right. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Totally. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me, Anytime. and I think we both agree that, uh, you know, don't buy this crap, splurge, spend a little. Save your money for the real stuff. Right. Definitely. This is cruel. Well, that is cruel. I'm having way too much fun with this bad boy. <laughs> I think... I think if you set up a toddler with this, you can drive yourself and everybody in the house nuts for weeks. Yes, but anything that gives me a microphone, I love! Such an attention. It's got sound effects. It does. Lots of sound effects. <laughs> and a stop button. Lots of sound effects.
<laughs> yeah, but overall, I, I, I'd say that there is way too much. Should I stop talking into this now? I think that there is way <laughs> too much crap out there. So I appreciate Neha's attempt at trying to cut the crap, right? Cutting right. the wheat <laughs> from the chaff. All right, so coming up, it is Code Red. Jessica's going to get her mixtape on, but first, could your Windows machine use a little performance pick-me-up? If you move a lot of data on and off your PC, chances are you've got a lot of file fragmentation. Defragmenting a drive can actually make it run faster by moving those bits and pieces of data into contiguous blocks. You can really make a noticeable difference when opening files and applications. Windows has a defrag tool built in, but it's miserably slow. JustKeeper 2008 is much faster and also has a built-in scheduling tool. Looking for an open source, as in free alternative? Check out Ultra Defrag. Not so pretty, but runs on every version of Windows from NT 4.0 through Vista, including the 64-bit versions. Check it out. Big thanks to GoDaddy for reaching out and sponsoring Techzilla. If you want to make an impact online, do it with GoDaddy.com. .com names as low as $199, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, and much more. Enter code TECH5, T-E-K-5, when you check out and save an additional $10 off any order of $40 or more. Now it's time for Code Red. So how many great mixes have you made for your friends or your girlfriends that you only wish you could share with the world or maybe even sell because they're that good? Well, guess what, mix makers? The mixtape is back, only now it is digital. At mixaloo.com, you can make mixtapes, post them on your sites, and even make some cash. It's still in beta though, and this is how Mixaloo works. So you create a playlist or a mix from a library of, of over three million songs from major and independent labels. And I found that the, the selection on this is pretty darn good. So you need at least 10, but no more than 15 tracks to create a mix. Then next, you need to promote your mixes online in order to make a buck, if that's what you want to do, via an embeddable widget on LiveJournal, Blogger, MySpace, and Facebook. And you can even make custom skin, skins and cover art. So if you have a Mixaloo account, you can sell any tracks and the site will pay you a percentage. Now, this is speculative. Some people say they'll pay 50. When I tried it out, I got a 15% cut, which isn't much, but hey, I can use the money towards buying other mixes or buying a Coke somewhere. Okay, so the downfall, which is pretty, pretty major, Mixaloo only supports 30 second previews, and I know that I would want to hear the full song, the whole mix before I buy it, so don't like that so much. And it's only compatible with Windows, which you know I'm resentful of because I use a Mac, so I can't even listen to the mix that I put together. So. But on the, on, on the upshot, I thought mixtapes were gone forever, and Mixaloo is an inventive project, a fun experiment. Check it out if you want at mixaloo.com. Now I believe it's time to read some of your viewer mail. Hi. Questions? <laughs> Questions. We got our first one up here. First one up says, while playing Halo 3, I blew out the speakers of my VGA monitor. Could you recommend <laughs> a good quality 23 or 26 six inch HD TV around 500 bucks from Daniel. Oh man, you know what Daniel, you could buy a decent set of surround sound speakers for a lot less than that if you like the monitor you have and it may be a good idea because you know even if you do get a new monitor you probably want to get some separate speakers because if you're going to like be all Mr. Pump up the volume you don't want to keep blowing out the speakers in your monitor. That said, Vizio and Sanyo both make HDTVs in the 26 inch range for under $500. You know, one thing you might want to think of it, if you can save a little bit more money, a 37 inch panel, much bigger, gonna look a lot better. Got it. Mm -hmm. All right, so next email says You mentioned during your Drobo versus RAID segment that you weren't a fan of RAID 1 or 0 for long term storage. Is my whole home storage system doomed forever? Keith, Davenport, Iowa. No, Keith, it's not doomed to failure, and it's heap saver. He's using RAID 1, right? Right. So basically you have a box, two hard drives, and the same data gets copied to both hard drives, okay. right? So one hard drive fails, the other hard drive's still going. Right. RAID 0, not very safe. A little bit faster, because what it is it stripes the data across the two hard drives. RAID 0, not very safe, which you already know, Keith. I like the super geekery of RAID 5, or the sort of not RAID 5, but parody, because like if you lose a hard drive, it, it basically allows you to make a much bigger RAID, right? Because with RAID 0 or RAID 1, you're pretty much restricted to a pair of drives. And with RAID 1, that single drive is the most storage you can get. RAID 5 or something like the Drobo, you get to make a really huge storage space by basically expanding across Expandable. a whole bunch of drives. Yeah. And I got a question for you, Keith. You say you're using Leopard's Time Machine. Email us, let us know how it's working if you like that. Yeah, yeah, because I'm thinking of uh, hopping on that, that ship shortly. 
Yes, you that are. Time machine action. Yes, you are. Okay, next we have there is a GIMP mod, GIMP shop, to make GIMP look and feel more like Photoshop. Would it be a, b a benefit to install this and follow the tutorials that are so plentiful for Photoshop from Andy? You know what, the funny thing about photo editing tutorials is you learn how to use a filter, you learn how to use layers, you learn how to use a lasso tool or something yeah. like that. It pretty much applies across any photo editing application. So you can probably get a lot of benefit just out of watching Photoshop tutorials right now. Some of the tools are different, but you know what, how you use them is going to be pretty universal across different applications. I say start jamming on the Photoshop tutorials and try out GIMP Shop, see if it makes it a little easier to follow along. The truth is a lot of the tools very, very similar already across the two. Mm -hmm. And I think that is our show. So don't forget to email us. We're always anxious to read your questions and comments. Remember, techzilla at revision3.com. You guys, it was a good one. Thanks, Patrick. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Jessica Corbin. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. in your kitchen eating your cookies. All right, so coming up, game gadget no. <laughs> it's so bogus. Like, totally, like they're totally retarded. God. Don't, 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 don't stop. No, 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 no. It's cookie, it's cookie time. Mm, mm, cookie in his mouth. Mm, mm. Have Turn clap. you on. Turn you. That didn't sound right. Turn you. I'm just not. Turn on, I don't think that that's appropriate. <laughs>